Hello everyone, this is Jinjinx, one of the Monster Hunter Math Guys. So, Safi Jiva is finally here for PC, and so are his meta-changing gorgeous weapons. Now, we do have some actual Safi Jiva guides and content in the work for you guys, but in the meantime, the most important thing is to know what weapons to aim for, as well as how to build the awakened abilities on them. Now, we do already have a part 1 for this, covering the dual blades, gun lances, great swords, hammers, hunting horns, lances, long swords, and sword and shields you should be aiming for. Link in the top right and the description if you'd like to see that video. And I do sincerely apologize for how long it took this part 2 to come out. I have already explained exactly what's been going on both on Twitter as well as in the previous video, so I don't want to repeat all of that here. But regardless, thank you all so much for your patience with us. Speaking of Twitter, if you do want to keep up to date with everything that's going on with us, be sure to check out our Twitter and shoot us a follow. And don't forget, Tuna does stream almost every day at twitch.tv slash tunataco. He will be streaming lots of Safi Jiva sieges, as well as the new Animal Crossing because that just came out and it is adorable. Drop it. Alright, let's talk about the rest of the weapons you want to keep from Safi Jiva, as well as what the Awakened loadouts should look like. We're going to be covering the rest of the weapon classes we didn't already cover in part 1, so that means bows, charge blades, heavy bow guns, IGs, light bow guns, and switch axes. Now, we are only going to be covering which weapons you want to keep, as well as the general Awakened loadouts you want to run on them, and we will be covering the actual builds themselves in the future in the meta series. However, videos are going to be coming out rather slow, so in the meantime, if you do want to see what the current meta sets look like, be sure to join our Discord server, The Mathlos Nest. We have channels in there dedicated to albums on every single meta set, and thank you so much to our entire set optimizer team for putting those together. Alright, let's talk Safi Jiva weapons you want to keep. Let's start out with my OTP, Switch Axes. So, Switch Axe is still a raw-focused weapon. This means that your loadout is going to be one of the three different Awakened loadouts you normally run for raw weapons. These three options are going to be running all attack Awakens, or running two regular Sharpness 5s with otherwise attack Awakens, or running a Sharpness 6 with all attack Awakens. We do have a full video explaining exactly the difference between all of these as well as all the math behind it, so I'm not going to rehash it here, but check that out if you're curious. Now, the one new piece of information that we have determined since that video came out is that the Master's Touch Awaken for a Safi Jiva and Master's Touch set bonus set is definitely worth it on basically everything. This is going to be the only situation in which running a Teostra set bonus Awaken to get Master's Touch is worth it damage-wise. Now, we will be doing a full video later on explaining exactly what's up with the Safi Jiva sets, but essentially running Master's Touch on your set allows you to run both the three-piece Safi Jiva set bonus as well as the three-piece Teostra set bonus for Master's Touch. You then run Resentment and No Health Augment instead of running a Health Augment and Peak like you do on normal Master's Touch sets. And this ekes out a small EFR gain over running Peak sets. Now, because of the fact that you constantly have Resentment active, arguably you might have better uptime with this set compared to running a Peak set. But you do lose Health Augment, so if you get hit a lot, not a great option, it's definitely more of a YOLO set. Anyway, we will be going deep into that in a future video, but if you do want to run that style of set, then you just replace any of the Attack Awakens on any of these different options with a Teostra Awaken. Now, if you're not running this specific set, you're not going to get more damage out of running a Teostra Awaken instead of just another Attack 5. But other than the Awaken loadouts, the switch axes you want to aim for, as we mentioned in the previous video, is going to be either Blast or Para, just like every other raw weapon. When all things are equal, Blast is just in general a better status for damage than Poison. Yes, we have made videos explaining why Poison was so strong in the past, but the only reason it was considered so strong is because the weapons it was attached to, namely the Gold Rathian weapons, were so busted. Now that Safi has made it that Blast and Poise weapons have the same damage stats, Blast is just in general better. 
Now, if you don't want the extra damage from Blast, and want the status instead, then we do recommend Paralysis. However, both Paralysis and Sleep work just fine. This one really comes down to preference. Now, an interesting thing with Switch Axe is that Pep Switch Axes are no longer really the best option. However, outside of a few matchups, running an elementally matched power switch axe is actually better damage than the blast switch axe. So if you really want to go for maximum possible damage, you'll actually want to get a variant of every single element for switch axe. And then you want to build all of those as a completely normal raw switch axe and then just have the 210 base element be a bonus. Alright, moving on, let's cover Insect Glaive next. So, Insect Glaive is interesting because it's going to work very similarly to how Lance did in the previous video. So, if you want just a general use raw IG, you can just run Blast or Para just like you do with every other raw weapon. And then you just pick one of the three standard raw awakened loadouts. However, just like with Switch Axe, you get even more damage if you run an elemental IG and build it like a raw IG. However, ever, due to how the numbers work out, IG gets even more damage out of running an elemental weapon with the Safi Jiva set bonus than the other choices do. So assuming you are okay with running a Safi Jiva Master's Touch set without health augment, we do recommend running these elemental IGs with a Teyoshra Awakened. IG just happens to run the Safi Jiva set bonus better than other weapon choices. Okay, next let's talk Charge Blades. So first off, because of the fact that Pep CBs are now generally speaking the meta because they do a lot of damage, you're going to want pretty much every single one except for an Ice CB. Turns out that Beatotus and Kulf Taroth had a baby and the Kiar Ice has been reborn as the Beatotus CB. The Bayo CB just gets such a disgustingly high ice value, even the Safi Jiva weapons cannot compete. Otherwise though, every other element for Pep CB is definitely worth getting and you just need to stack pure elemental awakens. Otherwise, if you'd rather run an impact charge blade to have the KO available or just so you can use it for general use, same as everything else, you want to run either Blast, Power, or Sleep. Now you can run any of the different raw options, however we do recommend just running straight attacks unless you need the purple sharpness. There are two reasons for this, first off this does give you the highest amount of base sharpness at 40 white. Secondly, impact files scale a lot more off of base true raw. Now you're only getting 10 to 20 more base true raw so it's only going to be a few extra points of damage per file. And because Savage Axe is the meta way of using Charge Blade and doesn't really do that much file damage, it's not a huge difference, but it's something to consider. And just like other raw weapons, if you want to run the Safi Jiva Master's Touch set bonus combo, you just trade out one of your attack awakens. One thing to note as well, if you do run to run an Artillery 5 Master's Touch set, you actually want to run a Master's Touch awaken, not a Zora Magdros awaken. This just ends up being the more efficient option, it basically gets you an extra deco slot. We don't recommend this set because it's frankly not that good compared to its competition, however it does get the most file damage. And we'll cover exactly why we're not a big fan of it in the future when we cover charge blade builds. Alright, next up we have an interesting one which is bows. And yes, that is correct, you do see blast bow on there, turns out blast bow is actually meta now. But hold your horses before you riot, it's only on monsters with elemental sh** zones. Basically, the only time it's for sure better than elemental bow is when you have an elemental hit zone value of 15 or lower, so things like Zenoga, Runenogagante, and Stygian Zenoga. Now, at 20 hit zone values, it definitely can be better, but it does depend on a lot of factors. For example, tempered monsters do have higher status thresholds, possibly making it worse than using elements. And for sure, if you're playing in a multiplayer group with other blast weapon types, you just should not use blast bow. But yeah, blast bow is a thing and it frightens me. Now if you want to make yourself a blast bow, you just awaken it for straight attack. However, there aren't that many monsters Blast Bow is going to be best for, so you still will want to get all of the different elements. When you stack 5 Elemental Awakens plus Elemental Augments, and you end up hitting a ludicrous 810 elements for each element with a full build. That is an insane amount, definitely best in slot bow for every element now. Alright, next up we have Heavy Bowgun. So Safi does give us upgrades for our spread pierce and normal 3 heavy bowguns. That's right, there's an upgrade to Loyal Thunder. 
which is the Safi Burst Heavy Bowgun. Now for the Burst, the ideal loadout is going to be running a Spread 3 Up Awaken, a Recoil Awaken, and 3 Attacks. Now two of these are going to be unique Awaken abilities that they have for Bowguns. The Recall Awaken just improves the recall on your gun and basically saves you the recall mod slot so you can slot in another close range mod. And the Spread 3 Up Awaken just increases your clip size. Both of these result in higher DPS gains than simply adding in more attack awakens. And yes, you run this Awaken loadout whether you want to run a special scope build or a shield heavy bowgun build. Now there is going to be one situation where you'll drop your Recall Awaken for another Attack Awaken. And that's in the case that you don't like using Special Scope, but you're not running a Shield Heavy Bowgun build. So Heavy Bowguns can only run 5 mods, right? But you can also only stack a max of 4 close range mods. So this means that if you stack 4 close range mods, but you're not running a Shield or Scope, you have an open mod slot with nothing to put in there. So instead you put a Recall mod and just have an extra attack awaken for 10 more true raw. This is a kind of niche in terms of Awaken loadouts, but it is an option. Next up, the new best Pierce Heavy Bowgun is going to be the Snipe Cannon. There are two different Awaken loadouts for this. The first off is going to have a PS3 ammo up, a Recall Awakened, and three Attack Awakens. The second drops the Recall Awakened for a fourth Attack Awaken. Essentially, the difference here is that the first option runs an extra close range mod, so if you do play in a range that lets you make use of close range, you will get more damage out. However, if you're not going to be making use of those additional ranged mods, then you might as well just run the fourth attack instead to just make all of your ticks do slightly more damage. Exact same deal with the normal 3 Safi gun, the Rapid Cannon. If you choose to run a Recall Awakened, you can run an extra close range mod. As long as you are in close range mod range, you will be dealing more damage with this build. But if you like to hang back outside of close range mod distance and plink at the monster, you'll get more damage out of running 4 attacks instead. Alright, finally we have by far the longest list on here, the new light bowgun options. There are a lot. Yeah, it seems like essentially every light bowgun archetype got better with Safi. Fortunately, the Awaken loadouts on all of these are pretty consistent with a few exceptions, which is going to be your primary ammo type up, recall, and three attacks. So first off, for spread three, the Drax shot is the new best in slot, and for spread two, the Frost shot is. And also the best in slot normal two rapid fire is also the Drax shot, so you're going to need two of these if you want to run both. Now for PS3 ammo, Aqua Shot is the best. Now the base recommended set for this is going to be the same as all of the other Awakened loadouts. However, there is an alternate build that is potentially better where you run a Nagakuga Awaken instead of one of the Attack Awakens. This lets you run both the Safi Jiva set bonus and the Nagakuga set bonus at the same time. This is very nice on Pierce especially because you can't always hit weak points with all the Pierce ticks, but this gives you a lot of extra base affinity. Next up we have Pierce 2, which is going to be the Bolt Shot. For this one, just run your standard loadout of Awakens. Next up for Sticky Light Bowgun, we have again the Aqua Shot. Yes, you're going to need at least two of these if you want to run both Pierce 3 and Stickies. There are two different Awaken loadouts for this. The first one is running a Nagakuka Awaken, this lets us run both True Spare Shot as well as Artillery 5. The second one just runs straight attacks and can still hit the same damage as long as you have additional buffs such as Evasion Mantle or Hunting Horns attack up extra large. Now we do have a full video already explaining exactly how Artillery works in relation to Sticky Light Bowgun and the exact nuances of why you would use either of these sets. It's a long explanation so I recommend checking out the video if you want to learn more. Now finally we have the Elemental Light Bow Guns. The only special one in terms of loadout for Element is the Aqua Shot. Yes, you need three of these if you want to run all of these different ammo archetypes. This one runs the standard loadout with Element Ammo 3 up as well as a Recall Awakened and 3 attacks. Otherwise, all the other Elemental Bow Guns do correspond exactly to what their name says their element is, so they're pretty easy to figure out. These do not need a Recall Awaken, so instead we throw an extra Attack Awaken in there because Elemental Ammo does scale with raw attack. That being said, you will save a mod slot if you do run a Recall Awakened. This will let you fit in a Wyvern Blast counter mod if you want, but don't bother with close range or ranged attack mods, they don't really affect Element Ammo at all. They only affect the raw portion of the damage, which is a very lower amount, so generally speaking they end up being a rounding error. 
And that is finally all of the Safi Jiva weapons you want to keep as well as the Awakens you want to run on them. Now we are going to be working on a lot more Safi Jiva content coming out for you guys soon, including some general guides as well as a P1 guide. Although, as I mentioned in the last video, I cannot guarantee how quickly those will be coming out. We'll be working on them, but I'm still recovering. And a reminder again that we do have all of the builds for the different Awakened loadouts we just discussed on the pins in the Discord server. A huge, huge thank you to our entire set optimizer team for doing all of the work to get these albums together, to crunch the math and get everything properly optimized. Especially in these past two months where I've been completely absent, they have been carrying the optimization on the Discord server, so thank you so much to the entire team. And thank you so much to you for checking out this video, especially since it's been just such a long time since we've been able to cover any kind of Monster Hunter content. And if you have any friends who are looking to farm Safi Jiva with you, be sure to share the video with them so they know what weapons to get. And if you enjoyed the video yourself, be sure to like the video as well as let us know which weapons you want to get in the comment below. Don't forget we do have our company Twitter where we post updates about everything as well as just things that interest us, and Tuna does stream live on Twitch almost every single day. Plenty of Safi Jiva sieging going on right now, so be sure to go check it out. And of course, none of this will be possible without the generosity of all of our patrons. And a huge thank you to our new patrons, Aaron Fakar, A1031, Dive2World, Ladle Wilson, and Reeks Tai. After all of my issues that I revealed in the previous video, as well as just the fact that the videos aren't going to be coming out as frequently as we would like, it really does mean a lot that Giala is still willing to support us like this. So thank you so much again. Alright, that is all I have for you on this video. Plenty more Safi content on the way, and later on tonight I am going to be streaming my first time of watching the new developer diary. It's gonna be fun. Anyway, if you'd like to see that stream as soon as it comes out or any of our future content, be sure to subscribe and make sure you hit that notification bell because YouTube won't tell you our videos have come out otherwise. Happy hunting hunters, we'll see you in the next one. Bye!